Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live. Thank you all so much for joining us today. My name is Cody and I am joined by the lovely Voodoo Val as always. How are you doing, Val? I'm doing good. Thanks, friend. <laughs> yeah. Happy Halloween, everyone. Woohoo! Um, today, me and Val are going to be drawing a spooky still life. Um, if you guys have never watched Juxtapaint, basically, also, if you're not familiar with mine or Val's work, um, our work is very different. <laughs> um, so we like to have fun and draw uh, the same theme with our differing um, art styles and just have fun. And we're going to be doing some spooky fun stuff today. So yeah, we're looking forward to it. It's a perfect day for us, um, truly. Like, yeah, it's exactly. a super perfect day. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to say hey to everybody in chat. Hey, Oliver, Umicorn, Gad, Rob, thank you so much for joining us. It's so good to see you all. Um, well, uh, Val, if you have, you want to show off like our, our awesome card design. That yeah, you yeah. Talk about a little bit. Um, so we are putting our work into this nifty little card template, which you can get your hands on if you click the link in the description. And um, we're going to be sending out some physical copies of these to people who we randomly draw. If you have commented on any of the Juxta Paint uh, posts over on the Instagram, um, a few of the winners have been chosen and I'm actually getting some of those sent out pretty soon here. Voodoo Val moved. So I've been creating cruising around the California countryside. But now that I am settled, we're going to be sending out some cards. Um, and if you folks would like to participate in Juxtapaint with us, definitely um, do some artwork according to our themes. Post them on Instagram. You can uh, snag this template and throw your own artwork into the, um, the little template we've got here and tell us a little bit about your illustration um, in that uh, Adobe Express template because we'd love to see any work that you create along with us. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's been a it's been a blast so far. We've done some pretty cool themes and stuff um, centered around like birthstones and all kinds of stuff. And we kind of always inject a little bit of spooky, cute magic into it, which is why today is kind of perfect because yeah. it's the spooky day <laughs> we both really love, um, but we're going to approach it pretty differently. So um, maybe we can kind of show off what our um, what our pieces look like. Uh, yeah, and, and totally. give everybody a little a little go here. Um, I'll do mine first, just because yours sure. is really really awesome, and you have like some cool game rules for yours. Um, but <laughs> I'm gonna do a spooky still life, um, which is like kind of your standard still life. I'm gonna go over some tips and tricks and stuff that you guys can use if you're doing like realism or semi realism. Um, illustrating some uh, kind of autumn uh, Halloween themed items. And we're going to do our very best to hide some spooky little guys in here. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to try and make it a little bit magical. Um, so I'm excited about that. But what are you working on, Cody? Um, so if we hop on over to my illustration, I want to show you guys. So I am doing something a little bit different today. Um, usually I will just start with a sketch. But um, as you can see, there's some weird blobby shapes like what's going on. Um, I segmented out my illustration into two, into three different parts. And what we are going to do is I'm going to do like a choose your own adventure illustration and it's going to be created by you chat. Um, so we are going to have three different polls and we're going to vote on what each section is going to have in it. Um, so like this first section, for instance, let me zoom in here a little bit. This first section, we can either have like jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkins, or we have apothecary bottles. And the section, second section is like more of a vertical section. So I said, um, we can either do a witch hat or a candelabra. And the third section, I did an open book or question mark, because I'm going to leave it up to you guys to choose a, another option if you guys can think of anything else. Um, so yeah, we are actually going to be doing some polls over on the YouTube. So Jack is going to post, uh, the link to the YouTube whenever those polls are being made. Actually, we can probably throw in the first poll right mm. now. Um, so the first one is going to be, uh, pumpkins or apothecary bottles. Um, so we can get you guys voting on that. And, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how it goes. I kind of thought of this idea last minute, so. <laughs> this is great. Um. Yeah, I'm excited about it. But yeah, I'm looking forward to <clears throat> seeing how yours goes, Val. Um, your background colors are super nice. Like I love the the moody aspect of it. Like it already Thanks. has such such great atmosphere. 
I'm really pumped about it because typically I think um, a lot of the episodes that we've done so far, um, you and I have like a um, a pretty standard, I think, approach to each of our pieces. And mm -hmm. every, every episode, it sort of ended up that we've like shared like a little tip. Um, and I didn't really mean to this time, but I just started like planning out what I would do for this episode. And I started out in full color, which I usually am doing like tips for going from color to grayscale. Um, so I'm pretty excited just to kind of showcase like a different ish workflow um for today's piece and one of the things i really wanted to um kind of go over is like something that you can do when you're choosing colors when it comes to like building upon stuff because like i would go in grayscale and like start working on this pumpkin and like you know make like a a gray ish shape you know, and then start coming in with like a darker gray uh, and start adding in a lot of like these little details to start like building this like pumpkin. And personally, I'm going to need to know from you, Cody, and folks in the chat, just a little side question here. When it comes to illustrating pumpkins, do we like them like smooth and round or do we like them to look kind of like heirloom tomatoes? Because I like heirloom tomato type pumpkins, like a little yeah. strange, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I actually go back and forth on how I draw pumpkins. Sometimes I do just like the circle. I think it depends for me because my style can be so simplistic sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm going for like those really simple shapes. But then other times I'm like, oh, I kind of want to go wonky with this. Like yeah. just the weird, like just the super weird shape because pumpkins are one of those things that you can basically draw any shape, any weird shape that you want. But as long as it has like those little segmentations on a stem, your brain is like, oh, that's a pumpkin. That's a pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Um, so let us know in the chat. I'm going to see Joshua is got his vote in for strange looking pumpkins because that's I, I agree 100%. But then sometimes like it really depends on the style or like what you're going for for the piece, kind of like Cody said. But typically when I approach like illustrating something, I do something like this where I'm like starting to paint the grayscale and then come in with um, some kind of uh, uh, blending mode that would then start to kind of create a, a, a color scheme and stuff with it. But one of the things that I kind of want to do today um, is talk about like painting directly in color. And it's something that I don't do often. And if I could be completely honest, I have a, I have a little bit of trouble doing it sometimes depending on what I'm working on and grayscale to color is my happy place, but I wanted to go over it number one, so that I can give these tips for it. And number two, because I think that, um, as artists, we should make the effort to try to put some time into some of the things we're a little frightened of when it comes to our totally. processes, right? Yeah. Um, and I think there's a lot of ways to do this, but typically um, I think a lot of people approach it where they're like, I want to paint something orange. So I'm going to grab an orange color and I'm going to start jotting down like some orange and then adding to it. And you can totally do this. Um, and I think that a lot of people's first instinct when it comes to something like that is to do like an orange, and then grab like a darker orange and start adding like darker orange colors and grab a lighter orange and start mm -hmm. like lighting it with lighter orange colors. Um, but I think a better way to do it really is actually to use the colors that make the color you want to use, oh. you know, and when it comes to like primary colors and things, maybe that's a, a, a little difficult to do, but we're going to do something orange. So using like various shades of red and yellow to illustrate it um, and then choosing like a really cool central shadow color, I think would start to make it look a little more interesting. So I'm going to grab like kind of a reddish color um, and I might even grab like a much darker, like a darker red. Um, and kind of jot some of these colors down in here um, and then grab like a yellowy color, maybe kind of on the side of orange um, and start to like kind of throw that in. And then what I would like to do is kind of shadow with a like a kind of purple color. That's what I'm going to do. Um, and we're going to see how um, how it goes. Like as I come in and start to like blend and really pull these two colors together, we're going to see um, what we get, um, at the end. And I think you probably have folks coming in with your poll. So why don't you take it yes. away for a little while? 
I was just about to say, I am working on just sketching my pumpkins here. I, I didn't really, I, I, by the way, we, our first uh, poll ended up being pumpkins. Uh, that, yeah. was how I, that was how I meant to lead that sentence, but it didn't happen that way. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so our first, our first section is going to be pumpkins. So as I am sketching these pumpkins out, we could actually just start the next poll. So that's getting to go, uh, getting going while we're working on this. So our next mm. poll is going to be a witch hat or a candelabra. Um, so yeah, I am just kind of like throwing in some, some shapes here over top of my initial little spot that I put on my canvas. Um, I, no like real plan or anything. I'm just kind of throwing down some, like a, a wide boy and a tall boy. Like that's mm -hmm. kind of, you know, just like what I was thinking. And, and I don't know if I want to give these guys faces. I could like, uh, maybe we could do like either jack-o'-lanterns or maybe we could just do like some cute little some maybe some just some cute little <laughs> dot eye faces and just yeah, like, yeah. you know um I, I think there's a lot of ways you can you can go with that kind of like we were talking about a lot of different ways to like shape the pumpkins but mm -hmm. you could do like straight up faces carved out of it you could mm -hmm. do like the little dot eyes which honestly i'm living for right now because i love <laughs> what they, they look just so kind and sweet and it looks like the one behind is peeking over his friend's shoulder yeah. <laughs> um but you could also do i saw an artist who like made the texture in the front of the pumpkin like some of the warts and things mm. in the, like their particular style kind of shape a sort of face which i thought was interesting oh, too that's so smart. yeah like i feel like you do you know you do yours but just by way of like um kind of getting the creative juices flowing for for anybody who might be illustrating pumpkins with us today like you could get pretty creative with that mm -hmm. let's see oh yeah little spots this is like the the cody bear like adding the little um <laughs> tidbits of like detail you never really have like a perfectly smooth surface right each each material and surface that you do always has its own little eclectic trinket mark <laughs> that goes with it which i love <laughs> I always have to add in some texture, you know, we, we, mm -hmm. we got to have that texture. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Wade, welcome. We love Hi, watching your stream a little bit ago. Great stream. If you guys missed it, go ahead and check out that replay on our YouTube channel. Yeah, please do. Um, I, I don't know if you saw Wade, but I, I caught you guys in a freeze frame when I paused your stream <laughs> and shared it for you in the in the slack um i don't know why this happens to me all the time but i always get i always get good screenshots of my friends <laughs> when i pause their shows <laughs> pumpkin bffs yes jack indeed um jack is also saying uh that she is here for spooky little guys um nice. and i can't wait to dive into it um also just to kind of like come back to this like i said i'm 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 kind of in a, a learning phase myself when it comes to like painting directly um in color but like i think that really doing kind of what i mentioned like instead of like let's just throw down an orange color kind of doing the um like a combination of the colors which make orange instead of mm -hmm just painting fully in orange and then starting to blend it. I think it really does lend itself to this interesting kind of texture um, uh, as the as the shape of this starts to develop. Um, and I also think that when I do things in this way, I always end up using colors and adding colors to my piece that I would never think to choose myself. Yes. If I was just like choosing Colors in the literal sense, if yes, that makes sense. Definitely. It kind um, of like opens your your mind to, to think outside the box a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and I definitely um have have a lot more uh luck um trying this because I going through, you know, when I think back of, about like my artistic journey to the point where I'm at now, like 
whenever I think of the times where I tried to be like, okay, we're just going to paint this directly in color. I always, I was very literal in my color choices and I was just like, ah, oh, that doesn't look right. You know, like I wasn't choosing perfect colors to go with each other right off the bat. And so I was very discouraged. And so I would not want to, to continue the project I was working on. And I gave up a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's natural for a lot of us as we start to like move down, you know, the, the, the path of our, you know, artistic journey, you start to get a little discouraged at some point and it's really easy just to put stuff down. Um, yeah. but doing this has kind of got me out of that slump, uh, a lot. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. It can be really tough to get out of, get out of those sections and, and just feeling just like feeling in a, an artistic rut, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Um, I get that way when I use the same types of brushes for a long time and I yes. feel like like my textures just need to be updated a little bit. So that those are the days that I'll just open Photoshop and just start like experimenting with all of Kyle Webster's brushes, just like throwing stuff down and just like mark making and seeing what what brushes I like and what kind of works and see if I can work something new into my workflow. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm loving um, your rendering, by the way. That looks beautiful. Thanks. It looks, it looks, it looks like like an old Renaissance painting. Like totally. you would find it in like the haunted <laughs> mansion or something. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I'm trying to make it look like very classy. You know, um, uh -huh. I've got I've got puffy shoulders and a collar today, so we had yes. to be we had to be on brand. Um, I feel like this is like the stage in the painting where like the farther away from it I am, the more accurate it looks. You know, and so I'm trying to like think to myself, like, how am I going to bring this like into better, um, like bring it into the space a little bit better. Um, but I think that we are in like kind of off to a good start. I also kind of want to start doing like maybe especially since, you know, kind of the point of this show is that like we kind of juxtapose our pieces ag against each other. Um, mm -hmm. And like, that's the fun of it. It's like, I would really like to try my hand at um, a voodoo Val interpretation of your little <laughs> like texture trink. I call them texture trinkets in my brain. Like each thing <laughs> kind of has its own stuff. So you have like these super cute little circles and dots and things to give those pumpkins texture. And I kind of want to see if I can start adding like some of those little pumpkin warts. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> and we'll see how how different we come across. I feel like like little spots of light from brighter parts of the pumpkin um, added to like the contrasting tones and hues and values would, would mm -hmm. probably work pretty well. Um, so like adding some of this yellow to like more of the dark and then maybe taking that darker reddish orange and putting like a little a little shadow under it kind of gives it like that vibe a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um and just kind of see where we where we get with that cuz I think those look like warts on the side of my pumpkin. Um also the more excited about this episode I get the less um peas appear in the word pumpkin for me <laughs> pumpkin. <laughs> pumpkin. <laughs> we're in pumpkin mode <laughs> also we've got um, somebody we actually, in the chat oh go ahead go ahead i was just gonna say we actually just got that second poll up it was it Ooh. was a, a delayed a little bit there so we just got that second poll up if you guys want to go vote for that oh yeah yeah so what are we on now um we are on witch hat and candelabra Yes. So currently Candelabra is winning by a little bit. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, we have somebody in the YouTube chat named Lord Luigi. And I just like to call oh. attention to you it's and tell Luigi you time. yeah, that it's, uh, <laughs> it's a good name and I approve yes. and I'm glad that you're here. I'm happy to see you. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think that's, I think that's a good start for our pumpkin. Like it, yeah, that it, looks awesome. You know, it's sitting there. I feel like there needs to be a little more separation from it and perhaps the, um, like the ground. And I still have my sketch in there, but I think that's pretty good. I think I'm going to give it like a little stem. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we are going to, um, cruise into the next item, but for the stem, the stem's going to be green. So if we're kind of keeping with our, instead of like choosing a green, you know, and trying to put a green thing in there 
Instead, we could choose blue and yellow and sort of, sort of mix them together. I think I'm going to go with this like dark kind of desaturated purpley yellow mm -hmm. um, and kind of throw that down. Um, and I'm going to try and make it, I always want to do like a little chopped stump when I do a, a pumpkin, but I kind of this time want to make like more of that vine is attached and it's like kind of going over the side mm, of the pumpkin mm -hmm. kind of, you know, like, um, I also realized that I want to do this on a different layer just in case I want to shave away some of the form. So let me do my control so. Z. The result of our second poll is witch hat. Ooh. So I am going to throw in a witch hat on the side, and I think I'm going to give one of our pumpkins a little baby witch hat too. I would love that. I vote for that. <laughs> That's definitely my pick. I approve. Um, I almost wore a witch hat, but um, like I mentioned, I, I moved recently, so mm -hmm. I could not find my witch hat. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, travesty. Yeah, it's very it's very sad considering um, canonically I wear it every day. Um, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I wish I was that kind of kind of gal or like witch hat on the reg, you know. But but no. Um, let's see. I got my blue, and now I think I'm gonna grab like a weird orangey yellow, and we're gonna see if this can like create a good greenish hue, which I think, honestly, that doesn't look bad. It's like not green in the, in the, like the, the obvious sense, but mm, like yeah. kind of throwing it in this way is like so much better than what I would do before, which is like, grab a solid green um and this now my brain is telling me it's a pumpkin and i know that pumpkin vines would be like a green or a greenish brown exactly um but there's no obvious green to be seen here and yet it still looks right to my brain and so yeah. i personally am going to keep trucking down this path as far as my future attempts at painting in full mm -hmm. color before you know grayscale um and i think it's working for me nice i think it is yeah, relative color is so interesting how it works. Um, mm -hmm. Just like, you know, and, and what's really helpful, yeah, is just like throwing down some color and, um, you know, just like color dropping what you have on the palette. Like if you color drop that quote unquote green that's on your canvas right now, it wouldn't show up as green. Yeah, but let's because, go ahead and do, let's do yeah. that while you're talking. But because of the relative color, because that's the most green color that you have compared to everything else, it actually translates as green on your canvas. Yeah, let's see what color it actually is. It's like a, it's like brown. Yeah, it's like, like yeah, like a grayish brown. That's weird. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I like, look, to me, it looks like it's like a, like a dark kind of um, earthy, part of the pumpkin there yeah, which definitely. makes me feel like i've accomplished what i set out to do yes <laughs> now i'm the one making the fancy colors that don't appear as they are at first glance <laughs> i'm doing it i'm the insta reel wowing you with color <laughs> <laughs> okay we have our little to be the insta reel sorry our little baby, <laughs> our little baby pumpkin hat here it's oh coming. no it's perfect <laughs> There it is. In all its glory. Yes. Very regal. Very chic. <laughs> okay. That's a pretty good pumpkin. Good job, Val. Good job. You did it. We did it. Okay. I'm going to call this pumpkin. Eventually, I'm going to be um, like painting these all at the same time like not having separate you know stuff for each of them but i would like to have them separate at least as i first put the still life together just so that mm -hmm. if i want to come back later and like add shadow only to one i'm not painting on like the whole canvas to try and create that i can just kind of like clip it maybe to just the pumpkin um okay 
Um, sorry to cut you off there. No, go for I it. Just, I just wanted to throw up our last poll. Um, now that we have our little witch hat and our pumpkins in place, what would you guys like to put in front of the pumpkins? If you guys have any suggestions, I originally had the idea of an open book, but if you guys want to just throw out suggestions um, in the chat, uh, feel free to do so. And uh, we can just kind of like, if, if anybody throws out a suggestion that we all kind of like, we can just go off of that one too. Um, yeah, I'm just like, do you have any suggestions, Val? <laughs> um, so we have the witch hat and we have the pumpkins and there was going to be an open book. Or another thing that could be cool is like, I don't know, because like a book is like something you would hold, but then maybe mm -hmm. something, I guess book is still inanimate, but it's an object I think of like as I would use it for a task while pumpkins mm -hmm. um, are like something that just like sit. Mm -hmm. These guys probably get up and walk around. They probably have little adventures, yeah. but like maybe another kind of object that's like meant to just sit like a, a, a bowl or a or a vase or mm -hmm. something like that could be interesting. We could also pull one of the um, one of the options from a past, a previous poll as well. Oh, because yeah. like an apothecary bottle would still be pretty pretty awesome there. Yeah, um, that's a good point. So maybe uh, the Halloween episode greatest hits returns. <laughs> <laughs> Steve said a rat. <laughs> we, can, we can draw a cute little mouse. We could draw a cute <laughs> little mouse. I was going to say, I, uh, maybe, possible, unpopular opinion. I think rats are adorable. <laughs> I think rats are super cute. Uh, I think they're very strong, hardy folks uh, with good skills. <laughs> I think they get a bad rap. <laughs> um, let's see. A couple of people said a spell book. Um, Lantern or lamp. That's a oh, good one. Lantern from Robert. Lamp, yeah. Yeah. That I would like be great. That. Let's, uh, you know what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to do a couple of those. I think I'm going to do a little mouse character mm -hmm. and I think I'm going to do a lantern. Oh, yeah. Go with it. I think that's great. I think that's a good, so, a good choice. I think I am going to stick our little mouse friend sitting on top of a pumpkin somewhere which is perfect here it's a perfect place for him <laughs> right here not that you need my approval for all these but i i, I approve of everything so far i appreciate <laughs> your approval. thank you thank you <laughs> so he's gonna be up here what should our little mouse friend be wearing chat what should Ooh. we what should we put him in should he have a, a teen a teeniest tiniest witch hat that's we should definitely give him a little teeny, teeniest, tiniest witch hat. Teeniest, tiniest is the yes. perfect name for such a hat. <laughs> I love it. Joshua says, I love rats. Thank you. <laughs> Rat fam, coming in clutch with the support. Thanks, friends. <laughs> a cloak. Oh my gosh. A, a little cloak, cloak would be cute. Cloak. Like a little, a little, a little wizard's cloak. cloak. Yes. It is, it is, it is done. Yes. Your wish is our command, chat. Good thinking. Give him a little, little magic cloak. Indeed. I'm adding a strange, like, pumpkin in the back. That's more of like a, you know, one of those pumpkins that, uh, they kind of look more like just a squash. Yeah. You know, I realize pumpkins are squash, but like, Pumpkins are pumpkins. Uh-huh. You know, like they they are like they're like royal squash. Yeah. They're very special. <laughs> Little you know? crowns. Yes, exactly. <laughs> they're very special. They're, you know, they 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 have a, a, a different kind of purpose than mm -hmm. just like regular squash. I suppose that like Thanksgiving, there's a lot of, you know, very important squash, which are Acorn included in like squash. Yeah, like in like cornucopia kind of scenes, mm -hmm. you know, you get you get a lot of like different kind of squash but for the most part i think that um pumpkins are like squash royalty king squash yeah yeah 
Um, and so, but I've got like more of a, more of a squash baby in the back there. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not sure on the colors just yet, but he's back there We're you know, we're kind of filling the space. Um, and then now I'm going to add a vase, I think. Um, and I'm going to hide, I'm going to hide my, Fill the um, space with a vase. Sketch. Fill the space with a vase. This is the Dr. Seuss episode. <laughs> this is, uh, this is the, yeah, this is the rhyming poetry episode. Um, we got people screaming about rats. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate your enthusiasm, Christy. Thank you for showing up for the rat fam. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if anybody approves of being called the rat fam. We can, we, we can deliberate on the title for us that I've just given us, <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's what it is until you guys, uh, dispute the title. Um, okay. Now I'm going to add a glass base. I kind of want this glass base to be transparent, but I'm wondering if it should be transparent or if I'm avoiding making transparent glass because I'm scared to paint it. Because it's hard? Yeah. Yeah, because oh it's very difficult goodness. to do. Um, Especially when you have like flower stems in there and it's just like chaos, you know? Yes, which Ooh. is exactly what we would be doing. Yeah. <laughs> but honestly, like, green bottle glass is like would be perfect in this yes. scene so let me see if i can take i'm gonna look up some reference green bottle still life and see somebody else like has probably taken a photo of a or done a study of a green bottle in a still life and i can kind of look at the approach another artist may have taken to mm -hmm. the same concept you know? Ah. Maybe it wouldn't be too difficult. Let's try it. Let's try this. We're going to try it. We're going to do something like that. Another reason I liked giving this mouse friend a cloak is because then I don't have to draw his arms and that makes it way easier on me. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Very Any excuse point. to not have to draw hands and arms is great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree. I agree 100%. Uh, I'm going to, I'm throwing in, I guess I am technically in this one, I am doing like some kind of literal colors. Mm. Um, but it's like kind of an odd, like I would have chosen a different green if I was being super literal, but I think I'm going to be like, sort of literal with the color because this is like pretty close to what we would choose but then i'm going to be not super literal with the highlights the highlights are going to be different which i think is necessary for this and then i'm mm -hmm. going to also need to do something like this i'm experimenting but if i clip and i grab like one of the colors in the background and i do something like that and then i turn it on the lower opacity then it's like the glass is going to change with sort of that color involved in it, maybe. And then I'll paint over top with like more of the color. I don't know. I'm mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure it out. We're gonna we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna do some experimenting. I'm trying to make this look transparent. I'm really liking how this composition is coming out, chat. I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but um, you guys knocked it out of the park. It looks great. It's looking really good. It's looking great. And I think that's like, it can, it can be a little nerve wracking too, when you're making like decisions live of like what yeah. something is going to be like, you never really know. Um, and I always get a little like, Ooh. <laughs> oh no <laughs> but this is pretty pretty great um <clears throat> let's see uh pet rats is pets and the little critters were smart oh yeah oh yeah they uh they're very very smart animals um 100 percent Robert was also pointing out, I don't remember if you um, 
saw his comment but talking about how like adding a lantern could also like alter the lighting but you have you know if you decided to add like other light sources i think that you have some pretty unique methods of like giving that that glow Mm -hmm. um effect and making it look like it fits with the rest of your piece quite well. Um, and mm-hmm. you had done like that demo in one of the previous episodes where you were showing like the the cat cafe uh, image yes. and how you did like those glows. So I think that, um, yeah, you're right, Rob, um, adding another light source would change uh, the, the vibe, but I think that um, Cody could definitely give it like, you know, a, a, a prominence and like a belonging of its own yeah i um yes it kind of depends on like how i would end up going the like what direction i would end up going with the coloring in this mm-hmm. and was for something like this i'd probably would end up going like really dark and um probably doing like that that uh that lighting technique with the overlay effects like i did in in the previous episode Mm -hmm. um or i could just end up doing flat colors too and that could like lighten the mood too so it kind of depends on the atmosphere that i want to go for i think like where like i think the background color really makes a huge difference on the piece like Mm -hmm. if i were to keep the background this cream color it would definitely like feel a little bit more light and magical whereas if i like even with the same setting i could turn it like even lighting makes a huge difference i could turn it like soup like a lot more spooky like if it was underlit or something Mm -hmm. you know um so yeah lighting is is really interesting and definitely something that you don't want to um like forget about when you're making a composition um and keep in mind just like how you want the final piece like what kind of atmosphere you want the final piece to have you know Mm -hmm. i think that um that's another thing that can be really uh difficult to when going through the the motions for all this and stuff is like when you do have a bunch of pieces that start to interact with different light sources and stuff it can be hard to like keep track of it Mm -hmm. um and and i think another thing that i forget with regards to that is like not only lighting things the way that they're supposed to be lit when it comes to having multiple light sources and stuff, but also realizing that um, certain uh, materials are yeah. shiny and can yeah. throw light onto other stuff, even though it itself is not a light source. Um, and so that always, I slip up on that as well of like making stuff interact. But honestly, that is one of the reasons why while um, doing, cause we're illustrating still lifes here, but like we don't have these things up right? as like we're doing them, doing a study, but like to do an actual still life, I, that's one of the major benefits of doing them is like illustrating a bunch of different materials and things in a scene together and learning and like um observing and then trying to do like a master study type thing of how those things interact with each other in in the same space um it's what what really is kind of the point there at least that's been you know what it is for for me yeah definitely um i think i've messed around and started to make something that looks like a green glass with transparency Ooh, yes it totally does it it's got like an emerald color to it yeah it's yeah that's really pretty i think i'm doing it guys i'm doing <laughs> it um and i kind of added like darker shades of the background with like the color that i wanted the bottle sort of like overlaid on top of it mm-hmm. um but trying not to like draw one giant green shape yeah and then you know, say like, this is, and then, then try to paint it in, but like add all those other points as well. And I think if I play my cards right, I can also suggest um, that there is the stems of the flowers I will add through the glass. I mm-hmm. think we can get away with that. Yeah, you know, drawing transparent glass is a lot like 
um, how recently you've kind of talked about, like you've done some demos of drawing gems because mm, they have mm. just have so many different facets of like how the light bounces off and just, yeah, it's, I, I feel like it's, it'd probably be a very similar like thought process going through and like just problem solving, like where the light is going to come from, you know? Yeah. Um, I should think about it like that more, honestly. Because I'm stressing about painting glass, but maybe I should think about it in that regard. Yeah. Uh, that's brilliant. I'm going to do that from now on. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how just changing your perspective like that, of like changing it to something that you're familiar with, you're suddenly like, oh, huh. I can do that. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That's kind of like the, like changing your, per your, your perception of like what you're illustrating when it comes to painting hair i think one of the mm. the reasons why i i got so comfortable like if i need to like paint super detailed hair is i was like i'm not painting hair strands i'm painting ribbons yes. and then i'll illustrate them as hair later you know yes. and it's like i'm afraid to paint hair because i don't feel sometimes like i paint very good hair um, but sometimes I end up like in the middle of a project where I have to paint like some, like a solid hairdo and mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, oh, this again. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, then I remember, it's like, I, I'm afraid to paint the hair, but I haven't been af afraid to paint a good ribbon in yeah. years. Like that's something I feel like I have a great handle on. Um, so yeah, just like. If, I guess if you're afraid to paint a certain thing or you're uncertain and you, you don't really know where something is going, it's just imagine it's something else. Yeah. I've done the same thing when it comes to um, doing my anatomy for my different animal characters. Um, mm -hmm. Like for some reason, I have this weird thing where I, so I've drawn tons and tons of bear characters, like mm -hmm. many, 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 many years I've been drawing bear characters. But then one day I wanted to draw a horse character um mm -hmm. kind of in the Very same different. way <laughs> now it's just like i can't draw a horse <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, i didn't know i and i and i actually yeah, I, funny enough i actually went through this uh process on stream on my behance stream um mm -hmm. and uh, i think it was one of my viewers that was just like well why don't you just draw a bear first and then change it into a horse <laughs> and i was like yes Yes, that's what I we're doing. Do yes, yeah, we do that. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. I love that. <laughs> I think I vaguely remember you like talking about that. Um, <laughs> and didn't you end up making like a really amazing pattern with horses yes. out of that? Yes, you made like I a did. cool unicorn yeah. one and then like a cowboy one. And I was yeah. like, that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just. Change it into something else in your mind, you know, um, something that's not scary. Yeah. And I think that you can really, uh, you can really make some pretty big art waves um, in your journey. I, I'm super proud of this, by the way. Yeah, I dude, that looks awesome. Like, I can't I believe love, how much I painted, honestly. I love the orange reflected light on the bottom right corner. That looks Thanks. so good. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to try to put some, um, some like plants, I think like a sprig of rosemary, yeah, a sprig of lavender and uh, the lily of the valley. I definitely want to like, cause we've got maybe like 10 minutes probably before we have to start like, um, wrapping things up, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want to try to like, at least get the suggestion of this stuff in here, um, because I want to make sure that I get to the little ghosties. Yeah, I don't have any little, little I don't guys. have any little friends in here yet. Yeah, my little guys aren't in here, um, and I don't expect because we have been. This is like, you know, a lot to do like in the remaining time. But yeah. I could probably get away with adding like a sketch of some of the plants and then doing our little ghosts so mm -hmm. let's do i'm doing like a dark green i want the lily lily of the valley i think at least in a lot of the interpretations and in a lot of the photos the stalks for lily of the valley are like a pretty light 
green color, mm -hmm. I think. Um, they are. I'm gonna make sure that I've got, um, cause I have like botany pages up to make sure I make them accurate. Um, but I also wanna make sure I have some photos. I think a rule of thumb when it comes to gathering reference is use other people's art as inspiration and use images as your element of fact. Yeah. Like you, you, cause you don't want your work to be the interpretation of someone else's interpretation of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, you use that to get your inspiration and, and maybe inspire like the atmosphere of your piece, but you should always have some photos of real life, a fact so that your art is still your interpretation of the world around you. Yeah. I um, love that explanation. Like that wording is really nice. I, I can't I, I can't claim uh, it as my own. Somebody said that to me um, many, many years ago, mm -hmm. and I can't remember who it was, but I've never forgotten it. And it, it struck a chord in me that I thought yeah. was like, oh, my God, that's so true. Because yeah. when you only look at illustrations, um, because you want to. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with mimicking somebody else's style for practice. That's why we have master of studies and things sure. where, you know, you, you, you copy the old masters. And I think that we have, you know, in this, this new era of illustration, we have new masters now of mm -hmm. digital art and of, you know, creating comics and doing graphic novels and stuff that I think are, are the masters of our age now, um, whose work that if you practice and you, you mimic, you can learn a great deal. But if you're only um, using other art as reference, then your end product is removed from your own heart. If yeah. that makes sense, you Definitely. know, cause you're only doing it the way so-and-so does it, but you haven't taken the time to show the world how you express what you see and feel. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, you know what? That's true, man. Because a lot of my pieces back then, um, I think, almost all of them just looked like things done by somebody who is a fan of Anthony Jones. Like, cause I was, <laughs> I watched so many of his training videos and stuff. And uh -huh. I think he's like one of the most incredible artists out there. Um, and his work inspires me every time I see it, but I was like, I should probably start looking at more photos so that my stuff yeah. looks like mine, you yeah. know? Um, and that's a rut you can get into as an artist where you're like, you start to feel downtrodden about your, your own, your own work because you know, it, it doesn't feel like you and you don't exactly know why. Yeah. I think that that's another good testament as to why, um, getting off of social media for a bit is Ooh. a good thing, especially for artists. Like, oh, yeah. I think that it's really easy to like be in that bubble of, mm -hmm. you know, the art industry and um just seeing like the same things over and over again and then you know you're wanting your just naturally gravitating and wanting your artwork to kind of like look like that or just it just happens to happen over time just because mm -hmm. you're used to seeing the same things mm -hmm. um and just like taking a step away from social media for a while um and just working on something without looking at somebody else's work for a bit too can be mm -hmm. really helpful if that's all you're seeing all the time you know yeah yeah um i didn't i didn't realize until i realized i didn't realize what the problem was until it dawned on me one day that i wasn't doing that you know that mm -hmm. i wasn't um finding enough influence outside the work of another um that that was the the issue and i i think it really helped me come out of my shell i would say that i also found a lot more success creatively mm -hmm. um uh, and professionally once I started doing that. And I think it's because, you know, one of those elements of people always say like, how do I find my style? I think that's one of the methods, yeah. truly. I think it's one of the methods is like, you know, showing the world what, what you see instead of showing the world what who you've you practiced based. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who you follow. That's, that's perfect. <laughs> Perfectly said. Yeah. Um, but yes. Uh, so. Um, also, I think I'm trying not to, I feel like we get, uh, I will get on a talking tangent and I will forget what time it is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, yes. Uh, yeah, we have like five-ish minutes. What are you guys all doing for Halloween tonight? Anything ooh, exciting? Ooh. I'm giving out candy. Oh, fun. Yeah, I'm giving out candy. Um, I'm going to do my little, 
my little Wednesday Adams deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I do have a witch hat that I might be able to dig up, like mm. I mentioned, but I think I'm going to give out candy and tell everybody that their outfits are cool. Yeah. What about you folks in chat and you, Cody? You guys having a, because uh, this is a great night for watching good movies. Yes. Good cozy movies. Probably going to watch Nightmare Before Christmas. Which you can watch on Halloween or Christmas. Exactly. You know? Or Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. It's a good Thanksgiving movie, too. <laughs> you know? Just all the holidays. Yeah. And also, um, um, Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> We watched um, Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, and The Nightmare Before Christmas for Christmas last year. Those were the two, nice. the two movies. <laughs> I'm going to layer via cut this, and I'm going to turn it down on a lower opacity, and I'm going to do a little erasing so that this is like kind of like distant in the jar there. Oh. Um, and in the last few moments, because this did take me a while to do, I'm going to add a little ghost face so to one cute. of these. I yeah. love your little guys. Yeah. They were like, I feel like once I add, I put a little bit more effort into them, they'll look more like little hovery ghosties. But this one is probably the cutest right here. And so I'm going to zoom in and do a little, do a little face. Um, in honor of Cody, I think we're gonna do a little little dot eyes because that to me feels like it's gonna be good. I think I feel like the the trick to this is that the eyes are far apart, and then the mouth is super close <laughs> to the middle of the eyes. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> okay. I love him. <laughs> I do. Friend. I'm in love. He's my friend forever. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Um, you have got, by the way, just some incredible texture going on oh, on your pumpkins. Thank you. Um, and I know we don't have very much time, but I would love to hear just a like a minute or so about how you're doing this texture because this is great. Yeah. So it's super easy, you guys. So I am using a um, brush by Kyle Webster. It's called uh, Gouache Perfecto. And it has like a, just a really nice, like smooth gouache texture. But at the same time, it has like these, like towards the ends and like with light pressure, it has like a really nice, like dry brush effect. So it's kind of got a little bit of everything. Um, And that can be found in his mega pack if you guys are looking for that brush. Um, But basically how I'm adding all of these different colors without changing the color that I'm using is with color dynamics. If you guys have never used color dynamics, I highly suggest you try it out. Um, I had never tried it until just this year um, after seeing Kyle use it on one of his masterclasses, actually. Um, So what you do is you just grab your brush and then you come up here to the the brush settings and then come down to color dynamics and make sure that that's checked. Um, And then I just have it on the default settings, which is uh, saturation jitter at 11% and brightness jitter at 2%. And then we uncheck apply per tip. So basically what that does is every single time I put my brush down, it Mm. is going to give me an alternate version here. Let me do a, a lighter color so it's easier to see. It's going to give me a slightly alternate version Ooh, yeah. of that color. Um, and it makes it so simple and easy to get a painterly effect. Mm. Um, like when you're using different size brushes and different tech, uh, you know, like, um, uh, different pressure sensitivities and stuff while you're painting. Um, and you don't even have to think about your color ch- changing or anything. It just does it automatically. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's it's so easy to get that painterly effect um, just like this. That's literally all I did. I just kind of like, as I painted this orange pumpkin, I just thought of the form mm-hmm. of how the pumpkin would look. Um, so I painted kind of in this direction, you know, like just the kind of like yeah. bulbous shape of the pumpkin. And I that's kind of, those are kind of the directions that I, I brought my paint strokes as I kind of just threw those colors down. Um, yeah. and it, and it just kind of like gave almost like a 3d esque, like painterly effect in, within that shape. Um, it looks yes. great. 
it, it has like kind of a realism too because pumpkins really do have like kind of that gray texture as well mm -hmm. on them which might be like dry dirt really of yeah like where they were laying and stuff but it just looks really really good i love it great technique yeah um speaking of colors that i wouldn't have thought of using as you were mentioning earlier the mm -hmm. color dynamics has really helped me come out uh, you know think outside the box in terms of my color palette uh because i would have never really used gray tones in my work like that before but yeah. um i think it adds a nice dimension to it um so yeah so I try it agree. out guys color dynamics i duplicated my little face and put it on all of my lilies <laughs> so it's like a bunch of friends hanging out and they kind of when i look at them all together they kind of remind me of sid the sloth <laughs> yes. like, the last dandelion <laughs> <laughs> they're so very cute. cool <laughs> um but i think that's probably a good stopping point yeah um, that's about it i'm pumped guys? i think we did a great job today yeah I, that was so i had a lot of fun with you guys today thank you all so much for voting in our polls and just hanging out with us on your halloween of 2023 Mm -hmm. um, and I hope you all have a wonderful evening and stay safe and uh, eat some candy and mm -hmm. yeah, have have fun. <laughs> Bye guys. Be spooky. Bye guys. Bye.